Take a close look at this bolt. It has some surface rust on it, but it's still useful. We're going to show you how we manage to plate ordinary hardware with a zinc finish. If you always have the materials on hand at home, you can save yourself a little money and a trip to the hardware store whenever you need zinc plated hardware. We're going to show you everything you need to have on hand to zinc plate and weatherproof this bolt. Let's get down to the equipment and products that you're going to need to actually do zinc plating at home. First off, we have our nice little here plastic container, our cat. Memphis has decided to contribute that to the process. All you need to have is a plastic or glass container. The chemicals we're going to use are not going to hurt that container, but you definitely do not want a metal container for what you're doing. Next up, we happen to have here, this is just an old lid from a cake pan and I just wrap it in some aluminum foil so that if I make drops as you can see we can throw the entire aluminum foil away we do not have to keep it that's what the aluminum foil is for and that's why we've got a little drip tray you could effectively say this is that has got a curved up edge so we can keep any mess on that tray over here we're going to use this eventually this is going to be our rinse bucket that was just made out of a bleach bottle. Well, it's got his regular water in it. What we have here, this assembly, is a little battery caddy with two D cell batteries set up. One side, we're going to use our positive side for our anode, and we're going to use our negative side for our part, which is over here. As we get to plating, that's what that's for. You do not need to have a battery caddy. You could do this by literally just wiring up the batteries and using some tape to hold things together. The battery caddy just makes it nice. You notice it's well used because I've done this for a long time with that little battery caddy. Next, you're going to need to have your zinc anode. Now, I got two of them. And they came like this, look like that. Got two of them off of Amazon for under $6. Now, being an Amazon Prime member also means I didn't have to pay the shipping in addition, so that was a really good deal. But you can get two of those for under $6 on Amazon. I don't know if you can get them cheaper somewhere else. We'll give you the number for that in just a moment. Next, you have to have distilled water. The reason you should use the distilled water is your local tap water could have other chemicals, minerals, etc. in it that you really don't want to have and mess up your plating solution. So buy cheap distilled water. You see we got ours as Kroger. That's as cheap as you can get. So that's all you want, cheap distilled water. Now you're going to need some apple cider vinegar. No, you really don't. You need to have white vinegar. I just happen to have a bottle of super cheap apple cider vinegar with a little bit left in it. So I'm going to use apple cider vinegar. It'll work fine. There's no reason to even spend that money. Get yourself the super cheapest white vinegar there is. Now you're looking at a box, a well-used box of Arm & Hammer Super Washing Soda. Now some of you might also have this in your house, you might actually use it for washing clothes. This is a box I've had for a number of years. It still works. It is exactly what you need because it's part of our plating solution. And so next we're going to mix up the plating solution. First we're going to start with our distilled water. And I'm going to fill this up fairly far. The only real reason I'm going to fill it up fairly far is the anode is only so far down in the water when we get done. So I'm going to bring this up close to the top. Now I've kept it below this division line because we're going to add some things to it next. Now we're going to add our washing soda with my handy garage spoon. And that's all this is for. I keep this one in the garage. I don't even know where I found it originally. And you see I'm measuring carefully. You put on a good spoonful of washing soda, drop it in your water. Now we're going to need some acid for our plating bath. We'll use our little spoon again. Now we're going to measure real carefully, but a good couple of spoons of acid are necessary in here. And that's what we've done there. Now I'm going to use the spoon and start stirring it up. You do want to dissolve your washing soda before you really start plating. 
Next, we're going to have to deal with our anode. Now, this is a used anode. And you can see it's been eaten away. Well, that's from plating. But also, there's one important thing to remember. Do not leave your anode in your plating solution all the time. If you do that, it's just going to eat up just from sitting there. So we're going to take our new anode here. And you want to bend the top of it over. And the reason we're bending it over is we want something to hang on to the side of the container. And keep in mind that zinc will bend nice, but you can also crack it if you bend it too fast and too hard. So I'm just bent it enough to hang over the container, and I'm going to put the positive lead on here. And I'd like to bend it back a little more. That's really all you have to do and have it into the solution. The other end here, see I've got a wire that I have soldered on to a wire. And I, this is a piece of stainless steel, believe it or not, and the plating wouldn't stay on it. But it's been used a lot, so it looks like it's not. But you see, I can rub it right off. We're going to use this loop down here at the bottom to plate the bolts now. Here we have our bolt that we're going to plate. And I'm wearing a kitchen glove because I can't get a hold of a nitrile glove right now. And you can also see our little loop. And we're going to set our bolt into the loop. That'll mean any part that doesn't get plated ends up under the head, so it's a good way to do it. Now this particular bolt has been processed first through a rock tumbler. Second, it has had the threads chased. Here's my handy dandy 3816 die that I use to chase the threads, get the rest of the dirt out of them in other words. And the last thing that was done with that particular bolt is it was put in muriatic acid for several minutes to make sure it's totally, totally clean. And ever since then, I have not picked it up unless I'm wearing no glove on my hand. So that's the real purpose of the glove because we don't want oil on the end of that bolt. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set our bolt over the side into our plating solution. Now, what happens at this point is it takes a few seconds before you're going to get activity because you've got your bolt so nice and beautifully clean, but it has to react with the acid just a little bit. And now it's actually starting to plate. Now you're looking into the container and you can see all those little bubbles coming off of the bolt. What that means is we're actually transferring the zinc from the anode over onto the bolt. And as you see, the longer it's in there, the more bubbles form and the faster the surface changes and the more plating that's going on. But there is a negative that you can come up with. If you're not getting good surface coverage, you may have to put a bubbler in the bottom of your container. You can do that with a air stone for a fish tank and a cheap air pump for a fish tank and a piece of air hose, obviously from the fish tank. And that can be done if you need to keep the solution moving around so you don't end up with bubbles in your plating. One thing to keep in mind, the reason we're only using real small batteries, really, 2D cells are really use a small amount of battery, is if we had too much power on this, this will try to plate so fast that the plating will not turn out good and it'll turn out grainy. So this setup is perfect for doing bolts and washers and nuts of the size that you're going to have, like on a motorcycle, an old rototiller in our case, or your car restoration or some other item you're trying to restore. Now I'm going to pick up the bolt out of the plating solution and look at it. And it's doing a very nice job plating, but I'm going to give it a little more time. But something you should know about the plating solution here and doing zinc, I can just put it back in and it'll still work. There are some plating solutions that you can be doing you cannot do that with. You can with this solution and plating zinc, no problem taking it in and out to look at it anytime you want to. The length of time to plate is important. It can be anywhere from, you know, like 20 to 30 seconds up to, it could be several minutes, depending on the size of what you're working with. This is why you want to check it. Most of the time, a bolt like this, you won't be in here for more than 30 seconds to 90 seconds total. Well, that looks pretty good. We're going to take it out now. And now we're going to take our bolt and we're going to dip it in our water over here. Now we're going to rinse it off in our water here. And it's just plain tap water. You could do this in your kitchen sink, or you could do it in your garage sink, or in a little container like I'm doing it. You rinse your bolt off, that's just to remove the rest of the acid from your plating bath. 
And then I take a microfiber towel and I go back and I rub on the bolts here. The purpose of the rubbing is to not only dry it off, but it helps to start to shine it up some. Now this isn't going to get shiny shiny because zinc isn't going to really be that way in real life. It's going to go dull anyway. When you look at the anode when it's used, you can see that it starts to dull up. And in the first place, it's sort of shiny, as we showed you. So the anode is out. And make sure you do not have an electrical contact for everything. Or you're going to waste your battery. Now that we've gotten this essentially dried off, wiped off, we're going to get serious about trying to shine it up a little bit. And we're going to, you notice I don't care about holding up my hand now because we're not trying to plate on it. So shining up is the next step. Now we have some Weenall metal polish that we're going to use on it. There are other brands for this. And you do not need a lot of this, just a little teeny bit. That's great plenty. I probably got more than I needed. And you notice I've been using this towel for polishing the bolts because it's already dirty. And you just work on it with the metal polish for a few seconds. And you can see it does bring up the shine quite a bit from what it was. But this is not going to be chrome or nickel, not that sort of look. It's just zinc plating. And zinc plating is very appropriate for certain things. Particularly, like I said, we're going to use it on a rototiller. Well, the rototiller works in the dirt, and zinc doesn't like to rust. And so we can have that as a protection to an old bolt on a rototiller. And that's what we've done here. The bolt head, you know, it's not a perfect head or anything, but it's for a rototiller. So this is a neat way to protect this from rusting and corroding in the future. And unlike if we just painted it, we chipped the paint right off of it when we put it back together. So that's the solution for doing at-home, inexpensive zinc plating, perfect for a lot of things on, as I said, cars, motorcycles, rototillers, or other restorations. Easy. Give it a try. Like and subscribe. See you later. That looks pretty good. I think we're going to take them out now. Okay, Wait, just a second here. I'm going to zoom in on you, and you're going to drop it in for just a second, and then repeat what you just said. We're going to just, just uh, take it out and say something. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Is that good? Um, we'll start over again with. So this is the solution because uh, you moved, and I'm just shooting the buckets. <laughs> so, okay. So just, uh, yeah, just uh, okay. Where you had your hand was fine. Um, just up and over. Uh, up a little more, a little more, lower, a little down, right there, that's good.